YouTube. Welcome back to Intuition. As always, we have a problem solving video for you guys today. Today, we're going to be solving for the volume and the surface area of a cone. Stay tuned. So today we have a problem solving video and the purpose of that the purpose of that is to is to learn large math and science concepts that have very broad application and will allow you to become smarter and develop a more intuitive understanding of the fundamentals and basics of science and mathematics all right so with that said let's get into this problem so we're asked to solve for the volume and the surface area of a cone okay so there are two things that you need to know right off the bat before even writing anything down and trying to figure out the answer to these questions. Number one, you want to know what volume and surface area are. Volume and area are basically a measure of the amount of space that something takes up. Volume is three-dimensional and area is two-dimensional. Second thing you must know is you must know how to adequately describe a cone in terms of the relevant parameters that will allow you to calculate the volume and the area. That's number two. There are different ways to describe a cone. How do I like to do it? Well, I like to start off with something simple. Is this similar to something that's even simpler that I know of? And there is, right? So when I look at a cone, to me, a cone is very similar to a cylinder. Well, a cylinder is basically a circle that is that has been extended, right? If you think about it, a cylinder is just basically a bunch of circles that are just cramped together. And the reason why I like that is that a cylinder is very easy to deal with. It's very easy to get the volume and the surface area of a cylinder because it's just basically a bunch of circles that have been extended. So what would be the volume of a cylinder? Volume would just be, be the area of all these circles added up together over a certain length, right? So what would that give you? Well, that would give you the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. You must know that. Pi, which is a number approximately equal to 3.14. R is the radius of the circle, which is the distance from the middle of the circle to the edge of the circle. That will be your radius. The area is pi times the radius squared. So you just took a circle, extended it. The length of the cylinder is length L. So basically the volume of the cylinder will be pi R squared times L, right? Because pi R squared is represented throughout the length. Now, what would be the surface area? for a cylinder. Well, the surface area is just space on the surface of the cylinder, right? Along the longitudinal section of the cylinder, that part is just being made up by the perimeter of the circles, right? So you just have a bunch of circles along the cylinder and the perimeter or the outer edge or the circumference of the, of the circles is what makes up the surface area of the cylinder. A bunch of circles elongated and then capped and then there's capped with circle. So what will be the surface area of a cylinder? Well, what is the circumference of a circle? The circumference of a circle is what? Two times pi times r, right? Two pi r. To get the surface area of a cylinder, you just do two pi r, the circumference of a circle, and that is extended over the length of the cylinder, which is length l. So the surface area of a cylinder is two pi r times l. Easy. And that's just the longitudinal surface area we can go ahead and add in the the two circles that cap the cylinder and that would be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared now why do i go through that whole uh, explanation of a cylinder well i do that because a cone is very similar a cone is also made up of a bunch of circles that are stacked together the only difference is that the circles that make up a cone are increasing in terms of their radius. But that's, but that's fine because we know the extent to which they're increasing. They're increasing according to a linear function, y equals mx, where m is the slope. So we do the same thing, right? But the only problem here is that now the area of, these, of the disk that make up the cone are not the same size. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to do an integral. So we're going to chop up the cone into the small disk if we make those disks smaller and smaller and smaller and add them all up well each one of those disks basically resembles a cylinder and we know what the volume and uh, what the surface area of a cylinder is so basically we can chop this cone up into a bunch of tiny cylinders add up the volume and area of each of these cylinders and then we'll get 
what the volume and area of a cone is. All right, so we know that the volume for a cylinder is the cross-sectional area, which is pi r squared, right? Times the length of the cylinder. Now, what's the length of the cylinder in this case? Well, mm, we're adding up these cylinders by making them infinitely small. As we're shrinking all these cylinders as small as we could possibly shrink them. So we're going to make them infinitely thin. Basically means in infinitesimal, which means to make it as small as can mathematically be small. We have to use a differential. And in this case, the differential is along the x-axis. So that will be a differential called dx, right? The cross-sectional area of each disk is pi r squared, and the length is dx. And we're going to add them all up. How do we add it up in calculus? How do we add up differentials in calculus? By using an integral, right? So it's a long s. It's an e log n and s, and the s stands for sum, right? Sum. x started off at 0, and x ends at a length l, right? So 0 to l. Those are our boundaries for our integration, okay? Now, this integral is being done relative to x. So we have to represent r, r squared, in terms of x. Well, what is r? The y-axis is our radius, which is y equals what? mx. So basically, r equals mx. So we plug in mx for r, and we get an integral from 0 to l pi r is mx, and that's squared, times dx. Now we know how to integrate this, right? This is just a power function. How do we integrate a power function? Well, increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power, right? Easy. The m is just a constant. That's just the slope. So that just that comes out of the integral. So I have pi, and it's m squared, pi m squared. And then the x squared. That's, that's our variable that we're integrating over. So that the power goes up by 1, and we divide by the new power. So that would be x to the 3 divided by 3. And our boundaries, 0 to L. We just plug in our boundaries. We do the top minus the bottom. So we plug in L for x, and we get pi m squared. L3 divided by 3 minus, when we plug in 0, we just get 0, right? So that's just 0. So our volume is equal to pi. And I'm going to combine the m. I have an m squared and I have an l cubed. So I'm going to do m squared l squared times l. So that would just be m l squared times L divided by 3. And what is M times L? M is the slope, and the slope of the line is what? It's R over L, right? So this is just R. So that is just pi R squared L over 3. Okay? And that is the volume of our cone. The volume is pi r squared times l divided by 3. All you need to know is what the is what the radius of the, the widest part of that cone is and what the length of that cone is. And you'll be able to figure out the volume by just plugging it into this equation. Easy. So now let's take a look at how to find the, the surface area of a cone. Okay, surface area, same as how we found the volume, right? We chop the cone up into cylinders. And we know what we know what the surface area of a cylinder is. It's just what? 2 pi r times the length. Each one of these cylinders inside this cone, we're going to make them very, very small to the point where their width is so small that we can only represent that width by a differential. And, that, and it's along the x-axis, so that will be dx. It will be very similar, right? We have an integral from x equals 0 to x equals l times 2 pi r. r is just equal to what? y, which is mx. times dx, right? Where dx is the width of the, of the cylinder, right? And again, we go ahead and integrate this integral here. 
So the 2 pi m, that's a constant, those come out. What's the integral of x dx? Well, x, you increase the power by 1, so that becomes x squared. You divide by the new power, divided by 2. So that will be x squared divided by 2. And we're integrating over our bound 0 to L. Right? And then now we just plug in our boundaries. What is that equal? These twos, these twos cancel, right? So they just give you one. So I have pi m x squared bounded by zero to L. So I plug in my L. What do I get? I get m L squared and then times the pi. Can't forget that. Minus, when I plug zero in there, I just get zero, right? So that's just minus zero. All right. So we get our, we have our surface area. So what is our surface area? I'm going to call it SA for surface area which is just equal to ML. ML is equal to what? R, right? So I have an ML and then I have an L left over. So I have pi ML times L. And that will be, and that will be the surface area of, of a cone. And of course, this is not including the, the circle that caps, that caps the cone. I'm just talking about the surface area along the length of the cone, right? Not the surface area that ends the cone. If you wanted to, if you wanted to include the surface area that, that caps the cone off, what would you do? You just add a pi r squared, right? So it would just be, so the total surface area, call it TSA, would be pi rl plus pi r squared, right? You can do that. Okay, easy, right? All right, so here's a good practice for you guys. Try to do the same thing for finding the volume and the surface area for a sphere. All right, do the same thing. Try to see if you can figure it out. So as always, I'll continue to follow, continue to uh, look out for the videos that we have coming out. Uh, if you have any requests, leave it in the comment section. And as always, keep learning. Be easy. Thank you.